Hello nerds, welcome to the Nerd Zone. I'm Scruffy and this is Scruffy Tales. And the trailer for Gladiator 2 has dropped, so why not take a look at it? Uh, I'm gonna be uh, flipping things around to see if we can figure out what the movie is all about. So we have a massive battle uh, between a fleet and a city, and I'm guessing that this will be the big opening battle uh, like we saw in the original movie. And it uh, does appear as if it is the Roman Navy assaulting a city, uh, you know, lobbing uh, fireballs into the city itself and uh, storming the walls and what have you. And it looks to be absolutely epic. And this is where we meet our main character, our hero. And I, it's a bit unclear. Is he defending the city or is he part of the Roman uh, army? Uh, you know, a uh, conscripted from a, a foreign land. He's part of the auxiliary of the Roman legion because it looks like he's fighting with Romans up here on the walls. Or, uh, well, I don't know, but anyway, he's pointing down at someone, kill him, kill him. And then we see this woman, uh, apparently, uh, I guess it's his uh, love interest because it seems to be, uh, the revenge story seems to be centered around avenging her death. And we get the idea that he is pointing at an enemy general or whatever, and she is about to kill that enemy general. So it kind of sets up that they are now going to be killing a Roman general. But that could be us, uh, the trailer confusing us for uh creating drama and wanting us to go watch the movie uh just a bit raining sorry if you picked that up uh, and it the trailer kind of makes it look as if they're about to kill pedro pascal who is a roman general in charge of leading the assault on the city itself but take a look at remember her helmet take a look at this kind of she kind of had these helmets on didn't she so <clears throat> i don't know is she, uh, she a uh, enemy of Rome, or is she also just like uh, the main character, a uh, Roman auxiliary? Uh, I, I'm thinking they are uh, twisting things around uh, in the trailer, maybe. But for whatever reason, we will find out that the main character wants to kill Pedro Pascal. Uh, for whatever reason, he clearly blames Pedro's character for the death of the woman. And. Uh, here we have it uh, in the trailer. He's on the beach for some reason. We can see the Romans uh, mopping up after the battle. The city has fallen. And uh, at some point in the movie, he finds the girl killed by an arrow to the chest. And he's very distraught. And uh, what happens then? Who knows? But for some reason, he is no longer a free man. He ends up a slave and a, glad a gladiator. Sorry about that. So... Here he is, a slave, a gladiator, uh, on his way to receive training. For whatever reason, somehow we ended up in this situation. And by contrast, Pedro Pascal is a hero. If he is a hero, it's because of the battle we saw uh, with the Navy. Who knows? Or if this is later on in the movie and we are reintroduced to him as he uh, arrives to Rome. A bit unclear. But, it, I mean, it gives... Uh, <laughs> you, you can clearly see how... These two characters uh, follow different paths in life. And we get this shot in the trailer. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, take a look at this arena. This is from the trailer, Gladiator 2. And this is from the original movie. You see the same setup. Uh, the same building here housing uh, the wealthy. Take a look. Same. It's, this is slightly larger actually. But the main thing is take a look at the banners. The same banners, right? The same banners, same colors. So is this in Gladiator 2 supposed to be the same location? Uh, we also have this in the background. Is that the actual Colosseum? That would mean that this is Rome and this is taking place in Italy. So then clearly not uh, this location, which is set in North Africa. Uh, yeah, uh, ooh. Not sure, but I mean, they are clearly taking inspiration from this location when they've built this uh, set here. 
and there's a horse here can we see that horse on the original no hmm could that be a giveaway that these are different i mean this could have this is taking place after these events so that could be a later uh, addition who knows but interesting same flags same type of arena same uh, structures and everything and oh i don't know we have our main hero and he has a sidekick is it you know a callback to gladiator the first movie where you have a uh, black sidekick once again uh, wouldn't surprise me if they went down that route uh, uh, so, but we'll see what happens and of course we have Denzel in this movie uh, acting as if he's in uh, one of his more standard action movies these days I don't get the feeling that he is uh, the right type of actor uh, to portray this character it kind of takes me out of the moment yeah, I, I don't think he's very believable in the trailer. Uh, he's clearly out for his own uh, greedy intentions. He has a beef with the Roman Empire and he wants to uh, uh, make as much money and gain as much power as possible uh, through gladiatorial games. And uh, he intends to use our main character to uh, make sure his plans come to fruition. He wants to earn money, he wants to gain power by relying on the gladiators and this gladiator in particular to obtain all that he wants to achieve achieve even and we even get a montage in the movie apparently uh, if we take a look at the trailer take a look at this this rowing machine they're training for the rowing battle the navy sea battle and the coliseum that we will get to in a bit uh, but oh my god is this a training montage we'll get a rocky montage in the movie uh, with this uh, rowing uh, the training facility thing, uh, wouldn't that be awesome? And of course, uh, that the thing we see early on in the uh, in the trailer is the Colosseum filled with water, and you have ships uh, in the middle of it all fighting uh, against each other. And this is not uh, fantasy. The Romans actually did this. I mean, that's just insane but somehow they managed to pull this off uh was it the coliseum or was it in other arenas that were purpose built for it hmm because the coliseum had the ability to uh, lift structures and the platforms and stuff up from uh, uh underneath the arena right doesn't sound like you want to fill that up with water so i don't think they filled the Colosseum. I can't remember. Uh, but I know they had other arenas that more than likely were purpose built for these events. And so, I mean, okay, so uh, some creative license to uh, get the point across, I guess. So that's fine. Uh, what I'm. <laughs> then they have sharks in water. Not entirely sure that's historically accurate, having sharks in the water during these events. Uh, but it does give you uh, an accurate portrayal of Roman entertainment where you have a purpose-built arena filled with water so you could have imaginary sea battles in front of a crowd looking on as people were uh, being killed and drowning in front of their eyes. And here we have the bad guys of the movie. We have the Emperor, what I'm guessing is his brother or nephew, who is a complete psychopath by the look of it, looks of it. But he is, take a look, he is so impressed by Pedro Pascal's general, this character. He is in awe. And then we have the Emperor himself, who appears to be a, a proper douchebag, as you might expect. And it's, the funny thing is, we clearly see that Pedro Pascal has an issue with the emperor take a look they are not happy and they are not in agreement and uh, as we learn in the trailer Pedro Pascal's character is concerned with how the empire is being run that there appears to be starvation in the empire or in Rome itself uh, but these two characters they are more concerned about uh, gladiatorial games about the empire going to war and stuff like that so I'm thinking uh, that these two are obviously the bad guys, but Pedro Pascal might not actually be a bad guy as such. Because I'm thinking 
that this is basically Russell Crowe's character before everything goes to hell in the first movie. I'm not saying that this is a prequel. I'm just saying that it's the same type of character. Uh, so Pedro Pascal, he is a competent general, an excellent uh, soldier, uh, but he also has morals and he's not afraid of speaking up uh, against authority. So when he disagrees with how the empire is being run, he is not afraid to say so. But he is also, just like Russell Crowe was in the first movie, a loyal citizen, a loyal soldier to Rome, right? So he does as Rome commands, but he's not afraid of telling the leaders, the leadership, when he thinks they're wrong. So this is basically Maximus Decimus Meridius in the first movie before uh, everything goes to hell. And here is where the uh, trailer lost me, and this is when I know that this movie will probably suck. Uh, well, the choice of music for the trailer uh, tells me that the movie more than likely will suck, but this, th this is just, no, yes, it's a movie, and you can take creative license and everything, but this just takes me out of the moment. This is such goddamn nonsense uh, that... Uh, no, it's just ridiculous and stupid. And oh my God, did this ruin the entire uh, thing for me. And I am not looking forward to this movie at all because of this. And then we see this happening. Not sure what's going on here, but Pedro Pascal, he's taking a beating for whatever reason, going up against Praetorians the elite bodyguards of the emperor i don't know but he's taken on uh, th three four or five i think there are a couple of out uh, off outside the image here uh a bunch of them at least and he is uh well he's taken a beating before this so maybe he has uh, upset the emperor and been sent into the arena uh to uh, be executed uh, in uh, in style uh, in front of the crowd who knows, but for whatever reason, Pedro Pascal ends up fighting what looks to be potentially Praetorians. Which leads us on to this moment where we have Pedro Pascal fighting our main hero in a one-on-one -on -one duel. And take a look at this. What's this? Dead people? Could this be the Praetorians? Because he's wearing the same armor uh, as when he took on these guys. And he is beat up. Uh, that could be from this fight, obviously, but I'm thinking this is the same sequence. And, uh, oh, it's very dramatic, isn't it? Uh, and, I mean, this guy looks like he's about to have his revenge on Pedro Pascal's character. We'll see what happens. There might be a twist that he actually dies and Pedro Pascal survives. If he is, in fact, uh, the Russell Crowe type character of this movie, it's just not him being the main character this time around. And, of course, we have Connie Nielsen returning to her role. Uh, not sure if that will save the movie. Uh, I guess it's a bit of a nostalgia trip seeing her in this role again. Because, I mean, the original movie is pretty awesome. We, can, we have Denzel Washington here in the background as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't think she's going to save the movie at all. Uh, but I'm guessing she's getting... Uh, a nice enough paycheck to make it worth the effort. Uh, but I will at least, I'm looking forward to seeing her reprising her role. And uh, to be honest, I'm thinking that might be the only good thing with this movie after having seen the first trailer. Uh, yeah, uh, not impressed. Uh, I'm worried. Uh, the choice of music was worrisome. Uh, the rhino was... Oh, that really took me out of the moment. And, uh, yeah. But there is a trailer version that someone else made on YouTube where he added the old score to the entire trailer. And that actually made the entire thing so much better that you, when you saw it with the original score, even with the Rhino, you kind of went, huh, this is kind of cool. So I'll try and remember to provide the link to that video down below. And, and he only has a couple of hundred subscribers, so please subscribe to his channel so he can reach 
the magic number of 1000 in the end so he can start making money from his stuff because that trailer was uh, yeah that that trailer got me more hyped for the movie uh, than the uh, original trailer so yeah well with all that said see you around